All right, welcome to this lesson. And I'm going to do a, a very quick lesson on how to find the limiting reagent of a reaction. And I'm going to show you a very quick way how to do this. And the way that I'm going to show you is based on the basic principle of chemistry and dealing with uh, ratios and reactions. When we're dealing with ratios and reactions, uh, basically what we're dealing with is we're dealing with something called direct variation. And basically, most of chemistry is direct variation. And uh, direct variation is a, very, is a very simple and, I guess you could say, primitive form of math. It's not even algebra 1. It's like pre-algebra. But most of the, the equations you see in chemistry are dealing with this concept of direct variation. So direct variation, the concept of that is when you have a line, it's a line, basically, that passes through the origin. So it's y equals kx. Okay, That's the concept of direct variation. But when we say the terms direct variation, we can also say the terms directly proportional. So for example, if I have like a fraction here, like I have 1 half, right? and if I ask you 1 half equals 3 over x, and I ask you and I say, well, what is x equal? How do you figure that out? Well, because this is direct variation, I can basically take the cross. I know the cross products have to be equal. Okay, So this 3 times 2 has to equal x times 1. So I can basically just say um, you know, x times 1 equals 3 times 2. And I can basically say x equals 6. So x, I can put a 6 down in here, right? And then the one thing that I notice here, too, with direct variation is that the cross products are always going to have to be equal. So when I say 6 times 1, right, 6 times 1, right, that always has to equal 3 times 2. Okay, so that's basically what I just set up here, right? But it just, I, I'm just kind of going forwards and backwards through this because this is just a very basic application of math. You learn this in pre-algebra. This is like seventh grade math and this is really the, the level we're going to use in most of the chemistry problems. Chemistry doesn't get that far into mathematics unless we're getting into rate reactions or maybe we're getting into logarithms with pH. But most of the time we're not dealing with that much math and, chem and chemistry. Okay, And so there's this concept of limiting reagent that comes up a lot of times and people get kind of confused about it because um, when we have an unequal number of moles how much of each mole will react and, and what's what's the limiting reagent okay so before we get into a limiting reagent problem I'm gonna give you a very basic reaction here this is this is just a very basic combustion reaction down here and before we even get into that concept of limiting reagent I'm going to have to balance this equation right so before I can do anything with an equation I have to balance it Okay, so for example, let's just say that I'm starting out with a certain number of moles here. Let's say that I have I have here. This is you know just so you know this is glucose, right? I'm just this is a basic respiration, aerobic respiration. Um, this is going to be oxygen, right? This is carbon dioxide. And this is water. So I'm basically just doing, this is a basic reaction of respiration. It's a combustion, a slow burn type of a reaction, OK? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with a certain number of moles of each, OK? So for example, let's say that I start out with 10 moles of my glucose here. And let's say that I start out with 10 moles of my oxygen, OK? Well, I want to find out the limiting reagent and I also want to find out how many moles of each are going to react. Like I might want to say, okay, if I start out with 10 moles of, of, of glucose and 10 moles of oxygen, how many moles of CO2 am I going to end up with? And how many moles of H2O am I going to end up with? Okay, so it's, a, it's a pretty basic question here. But before, before we can do anything, like I said before, we have to balance this reaction, right? So how are we going to go about doing that? Well, I have another video that talks about how to balance reactions very quickly using mathematics. So if you want to take a look at that video, I can show you how to do it using mathematics. But sometimes we can just look at equations and pretty quickly get a, a feel for how to balance it. So I'm going to have a 1 here, a 6 here, a 6 here, and a 6 here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to do a check real quick here to make sure that I've balanced this out. So if I'm looking, looking on this side, I'm looking at the number of carbons. I have six carbons here. I have six carbons here. If I look at the hydrogens, hydrogens over here, I have 12 hydrogens here. I have 12 hydrogens here. If I look at the oxygens here, I have six oxygens here plus another 12, so that's 18. I have 12 here plus another six, so that's 18. Okay, so I'm balanced. The question is, I'm, I want to ask is, how many moles 
how many moles are, am I going to get of CO2 and how many moles am I going to get of H2O? And I'm not even asking about grams or liters if we're talking about a gas. I just want to know moles. I'm just a, just a basic question. So the problem is here, when I have 10 moles and 10 moles, okay, I have to figure out which one is the limiting reagent. That's the whole point of this. In other words, there's going to be something left over. So whenever I start with something, okay, this is what I start with, okay, I need to figure out which one's limiting because the limiting reagent is going to control the reaction, okay? So here's the really cool part. This is what I was talking about before. We can basically apply this concept of direct variation here. I can take cross products here. I can take 10 cross with this and 10 cross with this. Now, if this chemical reaction is done correctly, the cross products should be equal, okay? So the cross products should be equal. So I'm going to go ahead and do these cross products in a different color here. Okay, I'm going to choose like, I don't know, let's just, just do black. So if I do 10, 10 times 1, that gives me 10 here, right? I'm just doing a cross product here with, the, with, with, with this glucose. And if I do 10 times 6 here, I'm going to get 60, okay? Now, if this chemical reaction is done correctly and I have the correct proportions, the cross products are going to be equal. This is going to be direct variation. This, this is just what I set up here. I'm going to have the cross products should be equal. But they're not, right? So which cross product is smaller? The cross product that's smaller is going to be right here, which is the oxygen, okay? So my oxygen is my limiting reagent here, okay? So just to review, I did the cross product here. 10 times 1 gives me 10. 10 times 6 gives me 60. The smallest, okay, the smallest is the limiting reagent. That's it. You don't have to go through all these tests and all these tests to write out, assuming 100 grams of this and that. You don't have to do it because we know we can use the principle of direct variation. That's my limiting reagent, okay? So that's the whole first part of this, this concept here, okay? So once I determine that, now I can go ahead and, and go to the next step here. So I know my limiting reagent is now going to be the oxygen, okay? So that's how we determine it, okay? So what's gonna actually react? Well, here's what we're gonna do. This is what's gonna react. Okay, so what I'm going to do to figure out what reacts is I'm going to take my limiting reagent here. That's the 10 here. I know that this is my limiting reagent here, okay, the oxygen, and I'm going to write it down here. That's what's going to control the reaction, 10 moles. Now, here's the really cool part. Now that I know that I have my limiting reagent, I can basically perform the same thing I did up here and just do the cross products. In other words, if I want to solve for a proportion, I cross multiply and divide. So I can immediately control all of the moles of this reaction just by doing basic primitive math that's not even Algebra 1, right? So let's just take a look here. So I want to find out the amount of moles and in, in everything else, right? Well, here we go. I've got 10 moles in oxygen, right? So I'm going to basically, I'm going to cross multiply, just like a proportion, just like here, cross multiply and divide, right? So I'm going to cross multiply and divide. So 10 times 1 divided by 6, right? So what do I have here? Well, basically, I'm going to have 10 times 1 over 6. So I'm going to have 10 over 6 moles, right, of the sugar, right, that are going to react, okay? I can do the same thing for every other uh, reaction now. So let's say that I have a, a, I have a 6, right? here and they're the same coefficient right so if they're same same coefficient it's going to be the same but I'm just going to prove it to you right here okay so I'm going to go 10 times 6 divided by 6 that's 10 moles okay I can do the same thing over here just I'm just doing a cr cross multiply and divide 10 times 6 here we go 10 you go like this 10 times 6 divided by 6 is just 10 moles again. Okay, I'm just doing that for illustrative purposes. Hopefully you can see that if we have the same coefficients, they're all going to have the same number of moles here. Okay, So now I've instantly determined the number of moles and, and by doing the limiting reagent, and it was much, it was much quicker than doing the, the traditional way of assuming a mass and figuring out which one you have less of because we can use these basic properties of math. I mean, this is, this is 
you know, really, really simple stuff here, okay? This is, not, this is nothing too complicated. And I think when you think of chemical reactions, you should always just write out your moles like this, what you start with, what reacts. And then, of course, um, what are we going to, what, what's not going to react, okay? What's, gonna, what's not going to re react here? So let's just talk about what's remaining at the end, okay? What's remaining? What's remaining? Okay, well, I had 10 moles here, right? And 10 over 6 of those moles reacted, right? So how many are left? Well, if I converted this into a decimal, you know, I just I kept this as a fraction just to keep it clean so you could see it. That's about 1 point, let's, let's go here in red here. That's about 1.67 moles, okay? So I'm just, just showing you there. That's really what the, uh, the 10 over the 6 was, okay? So if I went ahead and I just subtracted and I said 10 minus uh, 1.67 moles, okay? I'm going to say, okay, well, what's remaining here after I'm done, right? I'll do it in a different color. I'm left with, I started with 10, and this is what reacted, so I'm left with 8.33 moles of sugar that, j that didn't react, right? So I started with 10 here, 10 reacted, okay? So now I have zero moles here. That's what's remaining, okay? So that's that's the idea here, okay? That's that's how we figure out what's remaining, and that's all that it is. It's it's nothing that mysterious, um, you know, and, and, and you can kind of think of this like limiting reagent, like if you're baking, you know, let's say you're making chocolate chip cookies, right? You're going to use all of your chocolate chips, right? But you might have some flour left over, right? Because there's a lot of flour extra in the bag. Okay, so just to review what we talked about here, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to teach this in a way, uh, I think I have a lot of students right now that are doing the SAT2 in chemistry, and they need a direct and quick method to not only to, to find uh, the limiting reagents, but to find the other uh, mole ratios here. Without filling up the whole page with all of this dimensional analysis that just gets really confusing um, you know and, and sometimes we need to do dimensional analysis but for this simple uh, diagram here I mean or explanation we don't need to do dimensional analysis there's no point there's no reason for it okay so just to clarify again I had glucose plus oxygen yielding carbon dioxide and water I had to balance the reaction okay which I did I didn't go over how to do that that's in another video you can check it then I wanted to ask a basic question. If I started with 10 moles of glucose and 10 moles of oxygen, I want to know how many moles of CO2 are produced and how many moles of H2O. Okay, so the, to do that, we had to find the limiting reagent. Okay, so I had 10 and 10. Which one's limiting? Well, I take the cross products, 10 times 1 and 10, and 10 times 6. 10 times 1 is smaller, right, because 10 times 6 is 60, right? So this is my limiting reagent. Okay, that's what I started with. This is what's going to react. This is the actual reaction. I go 10 times 1 divided by 6, that's what I get here, because remember, this is just cross products of a proportion. They have to equal each other. And then to find all of the other moles, I just take the cross products. 10 times 6 equals 6 times 10. 10 times 6 equals 6 times 10. That's all that you have to do. I did write another line down here because there, there was some sugar that remained that didn't react, right? And so when we get into acid and base reactions, if we're doing a titration, if we're doing, you know, if we're if we're doing a buffer, if we're doing a weak acid, whatever it is, maybe there's a remaining part here that's going to affect the reaction if everything's floating together. So we always just write what's left over. Okay, in this case, the limiting reagent we expect it all to burn burn up and have zero moles left here. All right, that's all I've got for now. Thanks for watching. I hope this helped you out and getting a, a, a further grip on limiting reagent and how to determine mole ratios. Thanks for watching.